Hi all, Lee Veras here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. <laughs> Today I'm going to look at Photoshop Actions, what they are, what they're good for, and how do you record them. We'll examine this topic by creating a sharpening action that is extremely flexible and customizable. Along the way, we'll see how to create smart objects, use smart filters, make layer groups, and use advanced layer blending effects. Okay, let's dig in. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, and here's the image I want to work with. <clears throat> now, I've, I've adjusted this in Lightroom. I've also brought it here into Photoshop. I'm getting ready to print this, and I've got uh, two curves adjustment layers. Uh, this this first one up here is 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 lightening the very low values because I want to get I want to get some more detail into the shadows and then this top one is just setting the white point and the black point. See before I put this curve on top, uh, I was at one for my black point. And I I want to raise it up to ten because for my printer and the paper that I'm printing on, uh, when I get a value to 10, everything below 10 prints to the same shade of black on the printer. Um, so I want to have uh, the potential to record just lighter than black tones in the print. So by setting my black point in the image to 10, I know that I have an actual black tone, but every tone that is lighter than black will actually have a, a chance of reproducing in the print. Similarly, I've found that my highlight, if I set it higher than 255, uh, I, I lose some little subtle highlight detail. So I'm setting it to 250, you know, so my limits now are 10 and 250, and that's what this curve is doing. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead and select the background, and I'll, I'll explain why I'm doing that in a minute. Uh, so right now, I want to create a sharpening effect and I'm going to put it all in separate layers so that I can, can I have some flexibility. I can change my mind about how much sharpening I want to apply. I can make a print. If I don't like it, I can just reduce the opacity of the sharpening layers. And uh, it gives me a lot more flexibility if I do this. But it is a fairly complicated setup. I've got lots of layers to create. I don't want to have to do it do all this work every single time I want to sharpen. So I'm going to record an action that records all these steps so that I can just play it back and not have to go through the drudgery of actually doing this manually. So um, for my first action step, well, let's take a look at the actions panel. So here's, I'm going to click on my little actions icon here to show the panel. Um, there's default actions. These are things that come with Photoshop and they they play back a whole bunch of different things. You can experiment with these at, at your leisure. But I'm going to record a new action, and it's, I want to identify a, a, a set of actions that are my actions. So I'm going to record, I'm going to make a new set, a new action set here. We'll call this Varus. And then I'm going to record a new action to go in that set. So my new action is going to be my sharpen action. And as soon as I hit record, Photoshop is going to be watching everything I do and recording it into the sequence of steps that is the action. OK, so I'm going to hit record. Now, um, I've, I've learned recently that it's a good idea to record uh, a step here that normally I wouldn't uh, be thinking about this. Uh, but for an, a sharpening action, you want to have all that stuff at the top of the layer stack. Now I've got three layers here. Um, and I could, in, in another image, I might have six, I might have 10, I might have 12 layers. So I'm going to record a step that selects the top layer. And in order to do that, there's a keyboard shortcut for this. It's Option or Alt. If you're on Windows, period. So I've recorded that, which is the select front layer. The front layer is the one that's on top, right? So I've selected that's part of the action now. So I don't have to worry about manually remembering to select that top layer. Uh, it's recorded in the action, so it will always do that for me automatically. 
Now my next step is to create a new pixel layer that's going to contain the sharpening. So uh, I'm going to hold down Option or Alt and go over to my little hamburger icon over here. The layer options fly away and select Merge Visible while I'm holding down that Option or Alt key. And that puts a new layer that is uh, the, the result of all three of these layers. Okay. So this new layer is going to contain the first uh, part of my sharpening effect. So I'm going to, I'm going to, um, uh, let's, let's do this. I'm going to um, desaturate this layer. So I'm going to record that in the action. I'll go over here to image adjustments and just hit desaturate because I don't want to have any color whatsoever in this layer. It's going to be important later on when I create the sharpening effect. Okay, now that I've got that recorded, I'm going to convert this layer into a smart object because I want to run all the filters as smart filters. So come up to my filter menu here, convert for smart object. And that turns the layer into a smart object uh, uh, so that we can run filters as smart filters. And the reason I want to do that is so that I can re-edit the filter without having to recreate that layer again and reapply the, the effect to it. Okay, so now we've got that in place uh, and we're going to run a filter. I'm going to run the high pass filter. So come, come down here to other, high pass, and I'm going to want to run a filter here. So I'm going to zoom in here just so I can kind of see the larger preview. And the way this filter works is that at uh, very small radiuses, you can start to see what it's, it's sort of identifying uh, strong edge transitions. So we have a darker tone and then a lighter tone, and there's a there's an edge transition. And what it's doing as I increase the radius, you can kind of start to see it. It's creating the little dark and a white kind of light halo around these edge transitions. You see it really strongly here, right? Um, and so if I record wider radius, wider and wider I get, the wider those halos get. When we get up into around 20 or so, um, it's almost a more sculptural kind of thing where it's it's a the wide radius outside and the wide radius inside create a sort of bas relief sculptural effect. Um, now, I'm going to just go ahead and record these slider settings into the action because we can always come back later and edit them. Uh, because it is uh, a smart object, and so therefore this is a smart filter. Okay, so uh, we're still going. I'm still recording. I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to just hit uh, Command or Control J to jump that into a new layer. Um, this top one, I'm going to relabel it for. Um, uh, we're going to call this Lighten. Because I'm gonna, I want to only apply the lightning halos on that one, and on this one, we'll call this darken. Okay. So my light and radius halos. This is how we're going to achieve that. We're, we're ultimately we're going to change this to uh, overlay. Let me let me. Uh, um, I'll go ahead and change that now. So we'll we'll try this to overlay. And I'm going to come in here and alter the blend option so that we're only taking the lighting, lightning portion of this layer. So we'll come down here and go to blending options. And I'm going to blend through the dark half of the calculation. So right at 128 is the halfway place. I'm moving this black slider over. And as soon as we get to 50% medium gray, Anything darker than that is just not being used. So we're only getting the lightning effect. Now, similarly, let me just, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off just so you can visualize this. We'll go to our darkening halos, put this at overlay, sorry. And to get the darkening part uh, isolated, we again go into our blending options. And this time I'm going to blend out the highlight part. So this layer, now, when it gets right to the point of 50% gray and it starts to get lighter, 
we're blending through it so it's not applying the dark, the light and halos, only the darkened halos. So here's the unsharpened image. Here's with just the darkening halos. You kind of see it's like snapping in all these darker branches. Uh, and then here's the lightning halos. I turn the lightning halos on. I find that the lightning halos are the things that are more obnoxious. They really show up the effect of the sharpening. So what I like to have them in two different layers so that I can reduce the intensity of the light and halos. We'll bring that down to about 60%. And now I'm going to highlight both of these layers. All right. So the darkened layer is at 100%. The lightened layer is at 60%. I'm going to put both of these layers into a group, new group from layers. And this is my high pass group. That's my high pass overlay group. Okay, so that's that part of the sharpening. And, and you know, typically I would reduce the opacity of this as well. So let's let's go ahead and reduce the opacity of that to about 60%. I'm still getting a sharpening effect here. But now I want to get the, the narrow radius sharpening effect. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and stop recording so that I can delete these show and hide uh, things. So I'm just going to select those and delete that. So I'm not, I don't want to run that, play that back. Uh, I only need the ones that do things. So these hide and show layers, I'm just going to select them and delete them. Okay, and now we're going to continue on in our recording process. So, so I have to hit that record button again. And now we're going to do a similar thing, uh, but this time we're going to get our um, narrow radius sharpening into layers. Okay, so I'm going to hold down my Option or Alt, go to my Layer Options Flyaway, pick uh, um, a merge visible okay and now I'm going to run a filter on it so that means I have to record my convert for smart filters and now we're gonna run we're gonna run a we're gonna run a filter okay but this time I don't want to record uh, the settings for that filter in the filter. I'm going to want to run the action, have it stop here so that I can determine what settings to use on my own without recording those settings into the action. So the way we do that is we're going to come up here and in the actions panel fly away, that little hamburger icon up here, I'm going to insert menu item. Okay, so now it's waiting to see what menu item I'm going to insert, and I'm going to insert uh, a, an unsharp mask uh, filter. Okay, so I say okay, and you can kind of see all it's done is it's placed this, uh, this step there, but there's no little reveal triangle showing me uh, any settings because I haven't recorded any settings. So I'm going to stop recording now because I want to actually see what I'm doing. So I have to record the settings that I, I'm, I'm going to use for this particular image. So I'm going to come back up here and do my sharp and unsharp mask. And um, for this sharpen, I'm going to put it at 100%, uh, a radius of about one, very narrow radius sharpening. And this threshold is interesting. What the threshold does if there's any noise in the image at all, uh, you can use the threshold slider to pick the level at which you stop sharpening noise. So I think probably at around 20 or so, that's pretty good. We don't see any additional noise, but I'm still getting very strong edge sharpening here, all the texture in the tree, everything. So we're going to say, OK. Now I have to continue uh, my recording process. So I'm going to hit the record again. And now we're going to, again, do something similar here. I'm going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. Um, this top layer is going to be 
my lighten and in this case we're, we're going to achieve that by changing the blend mode here from normal to lighten and then I'm going to go down to this layer we're going to change that to darken I'm going to rename it here and again change the blend mode from normal to darken uh, and again, I, I want to typically, I'll, I'll set this to maybe 60% to reduce the, the, the relative intensity of light and to darken. And again, I'm going to put both of these into uh, another group. So my new group from layer, and this is my uh, unsharp mask. All right, one last step. I'm going to highlight both of these and put them into another group. It's my overall sharpen group. And we'll, we'll kind of reduce the opacity of this to, again, you know, maybe we'll do 70%. And now I'm going to stop recording. So that should achieve the sharpening that I that I want. Let's zoom out. So, so here's here's something to pay attention to. So we're gonna look and evaluate this sharpening at at 100 percent It may seem like it's too much, like it's just a little too edgy, and you can reduce the, the opacity there. But I always like to check my level of sharpening at 50%. So we'll zoom back out to 50%. And now I toggle it on and off. And it doesn't seem like it's sh that sharp. And this is more like how you would see it in the print. So I think people under sharpen a lot just because they're viewing it at 100%. It seems like really nasty. Uh, but when you zoom back out to 50%, that's going to give you a little more of a sense of what it will look like in the print. And so at this point, we decide, do I want to reduce the opacity or not? Or I can always come in here, uh, change the opacity of these layers relative to each other. Um, inside those, change the ratio of light to darken after the fact. So, so I have a lot of flexibility with this particular sharpening action. So now that we've done that, um, and you can kind of see all of these steps, uh, if there was a particular step that I didn't want to run in the action, I could just uncheck one of these things. Uh, but I let's test this action. I'm going to collapse it all into its little one word here. Um, let's throw away these layers. So now we're back to scratch. I'm going to go ahead and start on the background just to test that select top layer part of the action. We'll highlight the action and push the play button. Now, I've gotten to the unsharp mask step right away, and it's asking me to set you know, my, my, uh, my values. I'm just going to go ahead and accept what I've got. And now I'm done. I've got all my layers here. Dark and light, and I've got my high pass overlay layer, my two high pass overlays. I've got my unsharp mask, and there's my sharpen layer. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own post-processing work with Photoshop. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.